Hello and welcome to Fight News Now. It's John Pollock alongside John Ramdeen and Robin Black sending you into your weekend as the UFC is back in Brazil. It will be headlined by Chris Cyborg Justino taking on the debuting Lena Landsberg. So much focus has been on the weight cut of Chris Cyborg, but this actual fight when it was announced and now that we're just a few days away, is this one that garners your interest or is it simply this is Cyborg against whoever they find and that's entertaining. Yeah, that's what it is. I felt the same way with Ronda Rousey because we were following her in Strike Force. We saw what she was doing in Strike Force. We figured it would be the same thing in the UFC and for the first number of fights, that's exactly what it was. Nobody cared who was standing across the cage from Ronda Rousey. All they knew is we wanted to see this uh, bronze medalist in, in judo put her opponent on the ground and get an arm lock. And that's what we got to see. Just like with Cyborg, it's like, well, I don't care who's standing across the cage. I want to see her dart across, throw her fists, and see her opponent fall in 45 seconds or a minute. And then they can discuss the the potential future super fight with Ronda Rousey and Cyborg. That's the reality. We always got to get back to that. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay, so I guess Landsberg just doesn't even need to show up and fight or just show up and half-ass it. This is a real fighter. Now, I, I know she's facing the most ferocious 145-pounder uh, in the world, but she's fought at 145. She's a sizable fighter. She's a high-level Muay Thai fighter in her own right. Yeah. This shouldn't just be a gimme. In fact, it will be to a detriment of a cyborg to some degree if it is. It would be beautiful to see her pushed a little bit. You know, there's, there are times where you, if you don't see a fighter under some stress or pushed or challenged in some way or somebody be able to kind of put them in a bad spot, you never know how they're gonna react right. till it happens. It'd be great to see that happen. Uh, we've looked at Landsberg, some of her, her footage. She, what she's gotta do is stay away from the instinct to run. And I don't think she will run, she has enough familiarity yep. with striking but when you start to retreat from somebody as aggressive as cyborg you were in a lot of trouble it's counterintuitive but you need to move towards the but fire. you think about the failings uh, this is when you think about chris cyborg's path this is a, a woman that was training with that famed shoot a box academy in brazil that created vanderlei silva her ex-husband cyborg santos anderson silva shogun pele some of the most aggressive fighters that have ever competed in the sport she decided that was the room for her so i imagine that she's dealt with the ups and downs the being battered around it's like oh you want to come into a room full of men well deal with the men because we heard it at the tristar gym with with um, val Letourneau. it's like okay we're not going to cater to you because of your sex you're going to come in here you're going to deal with the firepower and that's why chris cyborg has been as dominant yeah. as she has yeah. been yeah, and it's very interesting when you think about it. Like, from the standpoint of, of the pure sport of fighting, you just you really want to see somebody tested and pushed. Uh, but from the audience who grew around Ronda or who grew around Mike Tyson, they don't want that. They, don't want they that. want to see destruction. Yep. Destruction. The problem is that almost everybody, I mean like 99.999% eventually lose. And when those, lose, when, the, when those athletes that lose were the destroyers, people just jump off. Look at how they treated Ronda after she lost. And you could argue that's part of her public persona and stuff. Look at how they judged Mike Tyson. You know, uh, you want to see somebody pushed and challenged and really see what their skills are. Just blowing through people is cool. It captures the imagination you throw that on a highlight reel on ESPN and people can watch and go oh I got to see her fight and that's really great for the masses but eventually you want to see that athlete push but for Chris Cyborg yes yeah, she has 16 wins as a mixed martial arts professional she also has yeah, one loss good for her. she lost in her very mm, first mixed amazing. martial arts fight and for somebody to lose after you know we're gonna give it a whirl it didn't work out for her to want to get yeah. back in there and test herself just shows you what type of for individual sure. she is. And that's why I think she is as ferocious as she is. I she agree. is the commodity that she is, and she is a must-see uh, must fighter because of what she does inside of the cage. When you lose your first fight, it's just the whole world, like you had this idea that you could be one of these people yeah. that would go out and it would go that way because you envisioned it and you were confident and you had the will to win. And then you lose and, and it's hard to go back. And it, it is hard to, but you turn the corner eventually. She turned it real quick. Uh, she's a very, very, very special fighter, and it is always awesome to see her fight. And this should be no different, but never underestimate her, never write off that other fighter until you've had a chance to really study them. It's easy to assume, ah, oh, they're gonna get killed. Yeah. Tyson's gonna kill this guy. You know, Cyborg's gonna kill this girl. But these are, other, that's another human being who's dedicated their life to fighting. So you need to go and see who they are. I, 
you know, it's going to be fun. I, Lena, I, Lena Landsberg is like a legitimate fighter, and she's also not going to be giving up the size Leslie Smith did in that fight, who was someone that was coming way up. And I think it does show you, though, the, the pool of fighters that they have to draw from, mm -hmm. because the fact you're taking someone from outside your organization, headlining in their first card, it tells me there aren't really many 135ers that are interested in going up for this nope. mythical weight class to fight Cyborg, regardless of whether it's a main event or whatever it has. It doesn't seem like there's, there's anything I, I gain from going up there or it's just not worth it for, for them because I'm sure they would have drawn from any bantamweight in that division that was willing to go up. Holly yeah. Holm will do it eventually yeah, and sure. that's a fight I want to see. And that's too. what it comes down to is how many athletes when you're presented with that contract to go I could fight you want me to sign to fight Cyborg? I've seen what she's done and and th again this is not a knock on any fighter Landsberg included it's just the rest of the the, the division whether it's 45 or 35 pounds do not seem to have the impactful strikes that Cyborg has. On top of that, she can take the punches. Lena Landsberg has what, 85 Muay Thai fights. She's faced Shevchenko in the past mm -hmm. in Muay Thai. But again, go back and look at that fight. There's not the impact. There's not the concussive damage that Cyborg brings inside of the cage. Can she weather the storm? Because we know that Cyborg's going to move forward. And the luxury Cyborg has is if you... if I feel that you're getting the better me in the stand-up exchanges because you're technically better. Well, I hope you're good in the ground game because I am good there too and I'm going to put you there. So, so that's, the, that's the difference. There is some good footage of Landsberg uh, showing her top game and it's, it's legit. It's hard to track some footage of some of these fighters, especially a fighter who specialized in striking so much. But I, I'm interested to see the fight. But the first thing you have to deal with when you're fighting Tyson or Ronda at the time or Cyborg the is the psychological challenge of it. People break before before they, they fight these athletes. And so you have to first deal with that psychological reality. Make that real, approach it, address it, and deal with it. The second one is the physical reality. This is a big, powerful woman. The first time you get hit yeah. by this, this is a whole new thing. You gotta deal with that physical reality. That's why we wanna watch this woman fight so much. And that's why she's in the main event. And that's why she's already a star. Last thing on this card, and I wanna go into way down into the prelims. And it's Eric Silva who, Goes into this cool. fight with Luan Chagas. He's a six, six and six in the UFC. He's been very inconsistent. Left Kings for this camp to go back home, open up his own gym. How important is this fight? Because to me, Eric Silva, I think a lot of people have written him off at this point, and uh, I think a loss here that largely confirms oh. it. Oh yeah, he's in big trouble. It's a very important fight we, for him. We've been having this conversation over the last number of months. You look at the deepest divisions, whether it's 45, 55, or 170 pounds. The goal for most fighters, if you're getting into the game, is to become a UFC champion or to make as much money as humanly possible. You know, Eric Silva came into the sport probably with those same ideas and same expectations. Now, if you want to get yourself a crack of the 170 pound championship, you have to de defeat at least three, four, or five top 10 ranked guys. So this fight with Shagas, he has to go out, he has to look better than he's ever looked before. And as you pointed out, there's a lot of people out there doubting Eric Silva because of the, because of USADA, the reality, and just the fact that maybe he's just not mentally there. We saw in the fight with Nordin Taleb that he went to do the glove touch, messing around, and got himself knocked out. So he, Eric Silva, just has to take this fight like he's facing George St. Pierre or Robbie Long. He is facing a lower-ranked guy, the lowest assignment, and that is with all due respect to Shigash. But, uh, so he can win, but they say in law, the man who represents himself has an idiot for a client. And they, they refer to the same idea when you decide to be your own coach when you're on a losing skid as well. He can win this fight for sure, but things aren't going in the right direction for him currently. All right, that is going to wrap it up for us, but you can tune in to our preview show where we will have lots more discussion of the fights going down Saturday night. Tune in at 7 Eastern, followed by the prelims live in Canada.